Welcome back. Welcome back. The boys are all here talking about the team out in Arizona, the Phoenix Suns, the big movers of the offseason. I think the Suns are going to be a team that everyone's going to be paying attention to. Obviously, you got D-Book, you got KD, you got Brad Beal. But we're here to talk about some of the role players and how much of a difference they're going to make on the Suns season. But I'll swing it over to Slim because he is partly a Suns fan. Our resident Suns analyst. Yodele he who bitch. Heard. Um, I'm going to keep it simple. Phoenix, number one seed throughout the entirety of not only the regular season, but up until the finals. Number two, D-Book, that guy. Kevin Durant, that guy. Bradley Beal, that guy. Bo Bo, that guy. Yeah, we'll get into that. Utah. This is, this is bro, that guy. Utah Watanabe. Shout out to you. I miss you every day, Utah. And, and what breaks my heart, so I, I like to give my flowers to, you know, all that we have lost. Uh, first off, shout out to Mikael Bridges and Cam Johnson. Shout out to the Twins. Didn't know and where you were going with that for a second. Thriving, you feel me? And something that really broke my heart, campaign. But I, I, I'm campaign. Sh- I, The motor. I Matt, fuck you. You're such a pussy. I hate Bro, campaign. hater. You, you hate everything. You suck, dude. Everything that's cool, you just hate it. No, so, he just thinks he's way nicer than he is. He's a he's vibes nice. guy. You should know he's, he's a nice. vibes guy. He's nice. Not low vibes coming from me. Do you not All remember right, the videos of him and Russ? Yeah, that was when he was cool because people knew him for dancing, not basketball. He's a hooper. What are you talking about? Yeah, but he's not that good. But he so, thinks, you ever I seen like a clip him. of LeBron talking shit to him? No, man. Well, you I better tried. look that one up. That's a fucking great clip. That's just goat doing goat things. You better look, look that one up. <laughs> Yes, LeBron, serious. the only reason why Bron is saying anything is because he know the cat knows that he uh, that guy. Uh, no, because he's talking be shit to Bron after he hit a three. Because he know he that guy. He said you were on the street. Don't come talking shit to me. Oh, I actually did see that. I, I know yeah. what you're talking about. Dude. That's yeah. brutal. That's yeah. Tough. Like tough to come yeah. back from that one from the king. Shout out campaign. But um, I like campaign's game, bro. Where's he at now? Pop. He went pop. That's what I'm saying. I trust. I trust he over there. He over there with them north side boys. You know what I'm saying. And then shout out to Wimby. Shout out to Sohan. Man, oh, we we need to talk about the Spurs again. You know, the number one piece that was needed was Chris Paul to leave. If you if this is not your first time on TOT, which I'm hoping it's not. If it is, please stick around, like, follow, comment, subscribe, or get slapped. Chris Paul is the biggest loser in sports history. I've been on this tirade many times. I'm not talking about the NBA. I'm talking about ever to play any sport of all time. He's the biggest loser ever. If you want your team, Matt, what is it? If you want your team to get to the finals or be really no. good in the regular season. No. If okay, you, want you want your, your team, team to get better to get- and still lose, you get, lose, Chris Paul. get Chris Paul. And it's always been that and it'll always be that. RIP the Warriors. Now that they got rid of that dead weight, they can flourish, bro. D-Book can finally take the reins over. I understand they're missing a lot of culture without those two guys. The twins, shouts out Brooklyn. But, like, this is what he's been needing IMO. Obviously, KD's going to cook. But this is what he's been needing to just kind of take the whole reins of the franchise. Chris Paul, I feel like, is just kind of a looming shadow over every team he's on, making everything suck. Okay, well, I don't know if I'd go that far. But you know who's running the that. I would say that if – for I think the one blessing that comes from them not having Chris Paul anymore is that in the playoffs we got to see D book handle the ball a lot more, and you got to see that he can facilitate. Shut the while, fuck out of the ball too. Absolutely, shot like sixty five percent from the floor, like it was insane. Hula hoop, bro. I'm saying we got to see D book kind of handle the reins with the ball in his hands and make plays for other guys. Obviously those other guys were fucking terrible, which is why last year when the whole K- <laughs> when the whole KD trade happened, everyone's like, Oh my God, the Suns are going to win the championship. Like, no, they're not. They don't have any role players. Like they just will not. And I said next year or the year after is really the window because then that's when you can sign all the role players you want. And that's what they did this off season. And now I think the Suns could be legit, but you ready I'm, to get into it. I'm not ready to go there yet. But I think 
if you're a Sun Sin, you're going to see the ball in D-Book's hands a lot. KD's not one of those guys that's going to run the offense for other guys. He's going to run the offense through himself. Not in a selfish way, but he's Kevin Durant. He can do whatever the hell he wants. He puts the ball in the damn basket. But you get to see D-Book and Bradley Beal kind of make plays for other guys, and I think that will be their main guys dominantly on the ball. And then I think the kind of the lost soldier in this, and I do, I don't, I'll get into it later on, but I think DeAndre Ayton kind of has to be traded. But y'all want the y'all want the TOT Phoenix insider, and you know who's going to start in his place, Slim? Who? Who's oh, starting oh. instead of Ayton? Oh. oh yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. Oh, I wouldn't ahead. mind. I would look. I wouldn't mind Bo Bo at the four if they if they would have kept Jock Landale, but. Um, I heard Bradley Beal is going to be orchestrating the offense as the one. I heard he's going to be playing point guard. I feel it'll be more 50-50 split, though. If it's not, I think it should be. Frank has so many different sets they can get into, too. Fuck, I'm also not a Frank Vogel guy. You never have been since the Pacers-Cavs days. And we'll talk about that another day. But, yeah, no, I just don't think – I'm not a big Frank Vogel guy, but – I think obviously coaching is important, and but I mean you have Bradley Beal, KD, and D Book, three vets that know what they want, where they want it, and if you're you're he coached LeBron, so he knows you got to let the star players kind of dictate things, and I also think there's a certain level to where you can let them dictate things, and we saw that with Steve Nash in Brooklyn, where it was the total opposite end of the spectrum, where he wouldn't let them do anything. He would bring that up, <laughs> but. I think that's something that's super important, having that relationship with your coach and players to let them kind of figure out the offense. And I think you're going to see a lot of mid-range jumpers from this team. Like oh, we thought there was a lot. raining in the middies. We thought it was a lot with CP, D-Book, and KD. I think it's going to be even more now. But There's so many guys who can score on their own, um, like at a real level, not like uh, some guys who can – there's three guys. It's like the Nets. It's like three guys who can get 35 blink. So. Yeah, I think I think this team averages about maybe 115 a night or maybe JD's 120. He's shown, though, in the past, bro, these situations don't work out for him. Like it did in Golden State, but like. This is this different. different because he already came into an old. He course, came into course, course, course. This, is what I mean. this, is, this, this is my point. This is a pretty similar Nets vibe. Yeah. And I think that has a lot to do with the new owner, Matt Ishbia. Um, he wanted to shake things up and contend, and he probably agreed with Finn that Chris Paul is a notorious loser, so they traded his and Did he agree with me, or did he agree with the general public? <laughs> Honestly, but, Matt, you can't find me. Oh, you're right, dude. My bad. He won in college. Yeah, I guess. No, he didn't. No, I'm saying like I get. I'm agreeing with you. Like I guess oh, he. Oh, I was gonna say. Like, oh, he fucking didn't. Oh, dude, he won a state chip in high school. Probably Shit. did. Probably loser, did. loser, loser. But no boys you know, are hilarious. He's an actor, bro. You ever see him on TV? Some he's a straight actor now. <laughs> I think he'll be good on Golden State. But... He'll be decent. He'll probably he'll probably get no burn. I think Golden State tanks. I'm not even a hateful person, and you know TOT is not a hateful pod. But if you if you know that, then you also know it's just an anti Chris Paul pot at the end of the day. We're an anti Chris Paul cast. I think you might. I think I might dislike campaign as much as you dislike Chris Paul. You have no reason to dislike campaign as much as anyone no, dislikes I do. Chris Paul. I think what's campaign the specific just... reason besides that he thinks he's better than he is? He talks too much shit for not being that good. He's fine. Like same thing. He's just a tough spirit, a free spirited dude to have on your squad. I wouldn't want him on my squad. You would love him on the Cavs. I took the word. You would love him on the Cavs. You would. No, I would hate him on the Cavs. So, do you hear this kid? He no, loves he's one of those guys. He loves doing this. I don't he, want. Oh. I can't wait for the TOT network where you know we we continue to build our family. You know, also you know adding some editors to the squad. You know, to where they can you know go back do the little. Call back, reverse the reverse the the time stamp, and then guess what? Twin was just talking much talking shit about Amani Bates, and then guess what? I'm getting DMs. Of- okay, yeah, that's different. I said, uh, yeah, uh, nice. 
No, but like I've never said, like I said, that's a little different, but still. it's very different. One, nah. actually, it's a totally guy. different situation. But right, nah. we're, we're getting very off track here. We could argue. This is the kind of stuff you get here at TOT. We are unleashing our personal problems right now. But back to the Suns to kind of semi wrap it up. I don't know if I'm ready to put the Suns in that A class of teams. I don't know if I'm ready to put them there. Okay, Slim, what? Oh, didn't we just say one. they could be the best team in the league? I didn't. Slim did. Oh, okay. I think I'm I don't know if I'm ready to put them there. Um as much as I love KD, I don't think that he impacts winning in such a dramatic manner that I can see them being one of the top like the one seed. I just don't see it. Word on the street. Mr. Mr. Durantula walked in and was like, this book shit, I'm not even tripping. I'm going to do what I do regardless. But this this book team, I don't care. Like, I'm right, here obviously, because obviously. I want to be here. But I think that that makes the situation a little bit different just because the players that Kevin Durant has played with in his in his tenure, I think that this makes the situation a little bit different just because D book is D book. You know what I'm saying? Here's the thing with KD. I'm going to just say it real quick. I know it as a guy who has been in the trenches, seeing it day in and day out. KD is very good with no expectations. KD is a professional athlete. Obviously if the cards are stacked against him, he's going to have a great game. He can perform under pressure. He's an elite pro athlete. That's not what I'm talking about. In a general fashion, Kevin Durant performs better when there is no expectations. That's the same reason he played well in Golden State. He's just fitting in the system. And it's the same reason that he had a lot of difficulty in Brooklyn until Harden got there, where it felt more like it was Harden's team. You can tell me all you want. I was there every day. It was Harden's team when Harden was on the team. That's when he started to come out of his shell a little bit. And and that's when he had the, the Bucks series. And he was playing one on five. Like, this is that same kind of setup where, all right, this is Book's team. In his messed up Twitter brain, anything that goes wrong is on book. All I have to do is the only thing I like to do, which is show and hoop. Yeah, I just I just think that the Suns are – I think they're definitely a better team now than they were last year. But I think that the Suns are a team that I don't feel like will be a team, and I feel like they're going to have to be – Come playoff time, come late in the regular season. Yeah, I that feel was like weird. I was like, "What? What?" We were both confused. What you just said. I don't like when I think of like a team. I think of like the Nuggets, where every guy yeah. kind of has a significant Celtics. impact. Celtics, someone like that. Like, I feel like the Suns are built now to where it's KD, D Book, or Bradley Beal, and there's not really another option. I guess you could throw Aiton in there, but not, Utah. Not. Can I ask you a question? But he's Matt? not an option. Like kidding. the Heat are like a team. The Cavs yep. are like a team. Yep. Like, Maddie. Knicks. Yeah. yeah, Knicks. Like would what? you consider Devin Booker a player? Not even not even a player. Hold on. Would you would you consider Devin Booker a facilitator before this season? Before last season or this season? This 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 previous season where we saw them go against the Denver Nuggets in the playoffs. I would say going into that Nuggets series, no. After I could see flashes. I say we take our time. And yeah. I trust the okay. process and that this system will develop on its own for these players, for these star players, for these ball handlers, for these absolute top tier scorers such as Devin Booker, Bradley Beal, Kevin Durant. Oh, oh, Utah. Exactly. For them to be able to orchestrate the system and have the flow move swiftly. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying that it will. Mm. I'm just saying that I think come, when push comes to shove, come playoff time, I think the Suns are going to, when they come up against the Denver or like a Lakers or someone like that, I feel like they're going to be forced to have to have a heroic performance from KD, D Book, or Bradley Beal every night where one of them ha or one or two of them has to get 40. And I don't think that's a recipe for long-standing success. That shit is going to happen on accident. You just watch, dude. This is Nets 2.0. They're going to get blown out in the second round. I, I just, 
I I don't think I was kidding. I was kidding. I was kidding. But it is Nets 2.0. I do think they probably are a second round exit. No, Whoa, I'm, I was kidding. No, I'm serious. Who's going to be better in the West? I don't know about that, Matthew. They probably might lose in the conference finals to Denver. I think that's possible. But I also don't think the Suns will be a high enough seed to where they would not play Denver in the second round. I think the Suns are probably going to be a four seed. The only people that I can see – I mean, shout out to Denver. We're going to give we gonna give credit to the reigning champs. Only, only team that I can see being a problem – in the Western Conference, healthy is none other than the Los Angeles Clippers. I was literally about to say he's finished the Clippers right now. Like, I think the Clippers would give them major problems. I think that the Lakers could give they, them The Clippers problems. match up real good against them. That's what I'm saying. Nice and like, nice. I'm just, I'm saying, I just don't know if I'm ready to go there with the Suns yet. You, they could prove me wrong, and I could be like, watch a couple games, and I'm like, whoa, okay, they actually kind of got this whole thing figured out. You got contributions from uh, DeAndre, and you got some spotty shooting from a uh, Eric Gordon. You got Utah back and stuff. Utah. I don't know if he'll actually play, but um, he deserves to play. I do too. I hope he does, but he definitely will. I, there's just like. There's so much unknown that I'm not ready to crown them. And I'm not one of those people that makes – when a team makes a big move and kind of goes all out for essentially a big four, I'm not the biggest guy in that. That's why I kind of wanted to go to the DeAndre Ayton trade thing. Just because I think if you can trade Ayton, obviously you're not going to get the value that you would have a few years ago. But if you can get a quality role player for DeAndre Ayton – like if they could somehow get him to Indiana and get a Bruce Brown or someone like that, like that is one of those guys. I would that, start straight rooting for the Suns at that point with Bruce, KD, and Ute. It would just like that's one of those guys that kind of glues them together and makes them a team. I just think they're so veteran heavy that we've seen the Clippers experiment with this and it's not been as good as people would have liked to think. And that's kind of you just could be looking at a totally team. different team during the trade deadline. Who knows? Look, you ready? Word around town. Guess what? Y'all know I'm a Phoenix cat. I rock with the Celtics, but you know, a town forever on top. You know what I'm saying? Winning the chip. Shout out to the Braves. We're going to win the World Series this upcoming season. Shout out to the dogs. We're going to three peat. Y'all know how it is. George Boy, fuck you. But um, let's get some. What's it called, Matt? Word around town. Numbers. We will. Peyton Pritchard is out of there. Oh. Where, what town are you hearing this? Trust. I'm trust, TOT I trust, Insider. I trust, I trust, I trust, I trust, I trust. I'm TOT Insider, but Peyton Pritchard yep. with the Phoenix Suns? Oh, you think he – You want him on the Suns. Word around town, Twain could be popping out. And it's like, where could he pop out to? I think that he would be a perfect fit in Phoenix. He'd be better than campaign. Matt loves to do this where he picks these guys and they're just, they'll never, they could be the best player in the world. They'll just, they'll, and Matt will hate them. Campaign's about to get traded to the Cavs and Matt is finna go stupid. No, we already made our trade for the summer with the Spurs. But all right, let's finish this video up. Let's get into our favorite segment the over under win totals. The Phoenix Suns win total is at 52 and a half. Wow. It. I'll start with Slim. I feel like he, I know where he's going with this, but. What I'm going to say? Over. What I'm going to say, though? Probably 70 wins. <laughs> Easy. Then I'll go to you. Um, I, I'll, I'll say under. I think they win 49 games. You're a trip. I'm I'm in the same boat. I think they win probably 47. That's my number. That's that a little I'm, low, but I like it from you. It's my target number. Um, there's like all the people that think there's going to be a 60 win regular season team this year. There's not enough bad teams anymore in the league. It's not the so. The Nuggets bad. are nos though. Uh, the Nuggets are the one team I feel like can do it. They They're can the just one... straight win 30 games in a row to start. The only thing is, I don't losing Bruce Brown's a big loss for yeah, them. Huge, so huge, I don't know, huge, but. Huge. Like, I just think that there's no team that I'm really going to see that are going to be past, like, 56 wins. There's going to be maybe two or three. 
And like those are like that's such an impressive season right now in the NBA. Like we had the 13 seed win 35 games yeah, last year. Like you're right. that kind of stuff. games, five games outside of the yeah. It's it's tough. It's a t- there's like, a lot of it, lot of talent. There's 25 teams that can beat any team on a given night, and I yeah. think that's the issue here. And I just don't know if the Suns are going to have it all figured out right away. And I think they might start a little slow and pick it up coming into the all-star break. And then they'll kind of coast to the playoffs. And then that's when we see where they're, what they're actually made of. But yeah, I mean, that's a wrap for this video. If you guys liked it, if you stayed this long, we appreciate it. Like, comment, subscribe. Let us know your thoughts in the comments. <laughs>